This young patient has a diagnosis of Down syndrome. She is clearly in our patient category, low tone pronation. She is unsteady in normal ambulation, is significantly delayed in her ambulation skills for her age. And it was hoped that the orthoses would give her enough stability to advance her skills. As we watch her walk, the first thing that comes to my eye is that the lateral border of her foot during mid-stance is not in contact with the ground. This is an extreme amount of pronation, and it means that all of her weight is borne down the medial side of her foot from the heel to the first med head. The lateral side of her foot on the plantar surface is not participating in the weight bearing. This means that not only is her foot lacking the structural support of full forefoot contact, but also that she's not getting the sensory information that the lateral part of her plantar surface would provide. A second thing we notice as we watch her walk is that she has a very wide base of support, usually seen when the patient is trying to create a more stable base than they're able to achieve through nicely integrated voluntary control. More proximally, we see that she uses a lot of lordosis and retraction of her shoulders to try to manage her weight line versus her point of contact with the floor. My estimation is that when we see significant motor skill delay, a wide base of support, when we also see pronation to the point where the lateral border of the foot is off the ground, I like to use the pre-made jumpstart SMO design. The SMO trim line is very effective at controlling the hind foot and the forefoot while leaving the ankle free. Initially, the therapist checks to see that the heel is seated in the back of the jump start. Secondarily, the therapist checks the volume of the jump start to see if it fits around the foot nicely not too tight and not too loose. And it's important to try on the jump starts with the sock in place. The therapist is applying compression with her hands to mimic the shoes that will be used to check that the closure of the jump start around the foot is reasonable. One observation on this video, it strikes me at this point that the toe shelf is a little short I like the way the jump start is fitting her hind foot, and I think the volume looks perfect. At the time of initial fitting, I'm usually looking for signs of discomfort or objections to wearing the braces or an unwillingness to bear weight. More importantly, though, I start to look for initial changes in gait, and I also look to see if the flexibility of the brace allows the patient to do floor to standing activities or standing to floor activities. It's important that the flexibility of the toe shelf be sufficient to allow a rollover from weight bearing on the bottom of the foot to kneeling. We expect to see that this positional correction for the pronation will in fact give her more secure gait I would expect your base of support to be more narrow when she's not challenged by the environment. I would expect her to fall less often. I would expect her to be more confident. All of her voluntary control that she generates through her ankle will be more effective at giving her better balance, better propulsion, and better sensory information as to the results of her shifting of her feet when the feet are corrected to a more normal, neutral, balanced position. One of my favorite segments of watching Katie is when she's walking over to the therapist 
She hands the therapist the two objects in her hands, and I like to watch how she adjusts very quickly her plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. You'll see a very quick movement into knee flexion, knee extension, back to knee flexion. It shows that she's exploring the stability posturally using the freedom of the jump starts. Approximately one month after the initial fitting, she certainly is more confident in her gait inside than she was when we first saw her. Her confidence in reaching down and picking up objects and manipulating objects independent of concentrating on weight bearing has been markedly improved. More dramatically, at the time of the initial fitting, one of the global issues mentioned by the parents and the therapist was that Katie refused to walk outside. After getting a jump start, she now became very willfully independent and insisted on walking outside without holding on to anybody. This was a dramatic and very satisfying improvement in function. We would expect the jump start to fit Katie's feet for eight months to perhaps a year, depending on her rate of growth, and we would expect them to be beneficial for that period of time. When Katie outgrows these jump starts, then the evaluation will be made as to whether she still needs the SMO level of support or in fact has progressed enough that we would think of dropping down to the polywog, which would be the next step down in trim lines.